everyone, it's Michelle Caruana from Play Cafe Academy. And in today's video, we're gonna talk all about how much it's going to cost to open an indoor playground or a play cafe business. Now, I'm gonna use those two terms synonymously in this video because I'm going to talk about both scenarios, whether or not you choose to have a cafe element in your business. And if you're a little bit on the fence about whether or not you should have a cafe or at least coffee and espresso service, I'm going to link to some really helpful and valuable podcast episodes that I put out about this exact topic that I think are going to give you a lot of clarity. So I'm going to link those in the description of this video. So just click below this video and you can find those podcast links as well as over a hundred other episodes for you to binge right now. And also in the description of this video, I'm going to link a couple other videos that dive into specific aspects of how much your business is going to cost. So for example, I'm going to link to a really popular video that I did where I walk through every single piece of play equipment that we had in our indoor playground, where I got it from, how much it costs, all that good stuff. So I'm not gonna get into those line by line by line elements in this video. So if you wanna dive more into these specific topics, I'm going to provide all of those links, both free and paid resources below this video. And if you really want to dive into how much your business is going to cost, exactly how much each of the line items that I'm going to talk about today cost me, I have my business plan toolkit linked below. It's going to be the fastest and easiest way for you to complete this market research and come up with these cost estimates on your own. So check out all of that good information. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I put out new videos every single week. And this video is actually one that I recorded in 2019. So consider this your 2022 update of how much it's going to cost to open an indoor playground business or play cafe today. So this is an update from a previous video that I already have on my channel. That's one of my most popular. All right, so now that I talked about some additional research that you can do regarding this topic after you watch this video, I wanna talk about the three main factors that are going to matter most when it comes to estimating your startup costs in the indoor play industry. So the first is likely gonna come at no surprise, and that is your geographic area. So some areas like New York City, Chicago, those bigger urban areas, are going to have more demand for rentals and costs for not just rent, but also utilities and contractors and build out and permits. All of those expenses are going to be a lot higher than say in a more rural area. So the most important takeaway that I want you to get from this video is that it's going to come down to your research. I'm gonna give you a bunch of line items. So get your pens and paper ready or take out your little notepad in your phone, but I really want you to do all of this research on yourself and get real estimates for your specific area because it is going to vary wildly. And I'm going to give you exactly how much it costs me for a lot of these items. But again, it's really going to come down to your own research. And a lot of this is going to fall on you. So again, I have tons of resources linked below this video, but just know, that your costs are going to vary depending on your geographic area. The second factor that's really going to come into play when estimating your business startup costs is going to be the type of play that you wanna have and the age range that you want to accommodate. So of course, if you want to accommodate a really large age range, so let's say you wanna accommodate children all the way from birth to 12 years old, and you really wanna focus on the big multi-story play structures that's really gross motor play focused with lots of slides and a lot going on and a lot of electronic games, that's obviously going to cost a lot more and it's going to require a lot more space than a space, let's say, that serves babies and toddlers all the way up to preschool age that really focuses on imaginative play or soft play and not those huge climbing structures. So Obviously, those two businesses are going to be completely different models. They're going to be reliant on completely different revenue streams. You're going to have completely different startup costs. So just keep that in mind that 
your vision for your finished business and who you're going to accommodate and what type of play you want to offer is going to be a huge determining factor in your startup costs. And the third factor that I kind of already alluded to that's going to come into play in this video is the size of your ideal space. So as I mentioned in my other point, if you dream of wide open spaces and huge climbing structures, you're going to require a lot more space, a lot more space than a smaller footprint play cafe that's only meant to accommodate children up to, let's say, four or five years old. So not only are you going to have a lot more costs with your build out, with your equipment, but it's also going to cost you a lot more in utilities. You're going to have to furnish a lot more space. You're going to have to have many more staff members in order to serve all of the guests that are going to be coming through your space. So not only are your startup costs going to be a lot higher if you open a larger facility, it's also going to result in much higher operating costs month to month. So I really want you to do a little bit of soul searching, watch my free two hour refunding class that I also linked below this video. So in that two hour training, I talk all about each of these scenarios. I give some pros and cons of each. And I talk about how to get the funding that we're going to talk about today to fund the startup costs for your business, regardless of what you choose. And in that two hour class, again, it's free, it's linked below. I also talk about the difference between franchising, licensing, opening your own space, all that good stuff. So it's definitely a can't miss training, but the geographical area, the type of play and age range you want to accommodate and the size of your ideal space are going to be the three biggest factors when it comes to determining your startup cost. So just keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this video. So to give you a specific real life example, we had a 2,500 square foot play cafe in Western New York, and we focused on imaginative play. So we didn't have any big giant climbing structures. We had playhouses, we had a couple slides, we had a lot of soft play, we had a large crawler area, and we had a full service cafe. So we really focused on that imaginative play aspect. And our playground was really themed like a little village. So again, we really focused on that imaginative play for the under five crowd. Now, technically, we did allow kids up to seven to play in our play area, but I would say 90% of our customer base was five and under. So they weren't quite yet in school. And if you watch the other videos on my channel, you'll know that we didn't even focus on open play as a revenue stream. We were much more into birthday parties and recurring revenue like memberships to not only have a sustainable business, but a highly profitable business. So again, go through my channel and watch my other videos on that topic. But for that 2,500 square foot facility, again, in Western New York that focused on imaginative play, it cost us just over $176,000 to get all the way from idea to opening day. So that includes our build out, that includes all of our legal expenses, our architect, our furniture, our staff uniforms, literally everything to have our grand opening celebration. However, we did make a lot of mistakes in estimating our startup costs. So we got a loan for literally exactly $176,000 and we spent every penny, like I said, as a result of some of those mistakes. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to recreate this video because I don't want you to make those same mistakes that I did back in 2015. So we actually had to go back and get some additional funding for operating costs and for working capital, because that is so important to the survival of a brand new business is to have that bank account cushion for if you need to pivot or if your business is more seasonal than you expected, or if it just takes you a little bit longer to reach profitability, you need to have working capital, which I'm going to talk a little bit more throughout the rest of this video, but it cost us $176,000 in startup costs. And then we went and got an additional $25,000 in working capital just to survive those first couple months, reinvest a little bit, make sure we had more than enough staff to make sure that all of our customers got an absolutely amazing experience. We didn't want anybody to enter our cafe and have it be unfinished or have us be severely understaffed or 
having the staff members that were there, you know, running around like crazy people. We wanted them to walk in and feel relaxed and feel calm and know that we did our best and really thoughtfully designed our space with their best interest and their children's best interest in mind. So that's exactly how much it costs. And now I'm going to give you a line by line breakdown of exactly what costs factored into that $176,000. But first, I just want to give you a word of advice and maybe a little cautionary tale. But I've seen a lot of businesses in this industry open for a lot less. So $200,000 when you add together the startup costs and working capital that we ended up going back for, it might seem like a crazy amount of money. And you might think, oh, I can definitely do it for less if I hire my cousin for this or if we don't do a completely build to suit interior. Because remember, our space was complete dirt when we moved in. We designed every single inch of our space with profitability and our customers and staff's experience in mind. We did not try to adapt to an existing space that really wasn't created to be an indoor playground or a play cafe. So I do see a lot of businesses open for a lot less in startup costs and in working capital. But the unfortunate truth is that a lot of those businesses fail really quickly. And that's because they didn't custom design their space with this specific business model in mind. And their customers can feel it. Their staff can feel it. They're constantly needing to do repairs and improvements. And let me tell you, if a customer visits your space and has a bad experience, you're going to have to work so much harder in order to get them back through the doors. So my best advice after having been behind the scenes of hundreds of other indoor playgrounds, both successful and non-successful, I really want to encourage you to really think through your startup costs and make sure that you're creating the interior of your business with this exact business model in mind because it is very unique and it is very nuanced and it is going to be a constant uphill battle if you try to force yourself into an existing space and don't invest enough in the build out and in the refurbishment of the interior of your space. So if you want to see a wide variety of other indoor playgrounds and play cafes that I work with, from the very small footprint stores all the way to the giant gross motor indoor playgrounds with huge climbing structures, I have an entire playlist dedicated to play cafe and indoor playground tours on my channel. So again, you can get a great variety there and their startup costs fluctuate wildly. So again, I want you to watch those tours, take away what you like, what you don't like about those spaces, and you can take all of that into consideration when you're designing your own space and when you're coming up with your own startup costs. But something that I always like to tell indoor playground owners when they're thinking about being extra lean with their startup costs and really doing minimal build out is that I want you to think of it as kind of like putting on those skinny jeans for the first time, you know, after a pandemic. Just because they zip doesn't mean they fit or that you should wear them. I mean, I know I went through this after the pandemic. I'm still going through it, so I feel you. But just because you can force your business into an existing space and reach opening day with as little cost as possible doesn't mean that you should and doesn't mean that it's going to be comfortable or at all a positive experience. So I always like to use that analogy because I'm telling you, this is a huge mistake that I, a lot of, that I see a lot of indoor playground owners make. So I want you to avoid that one at all costs. Luckily, that's one that I didn't make myself, but it is one that I've seen many other indoor playground owners make. So now I want to talk about how we arrived at that $200,000 number. So startup costs plus working capital. And again, if you want a line-by-line -line breakdown of all of these things and exactly what we paid for each, it's all in my business plan toolkit, which is linked below this video. It's only $27, but I really want to encourage you to do all of this research on your own as well. So get your pens ready because we are going to go through the complete basic list of the major costs that you need to consider when you're determining your startup costs for your business before you decide to approach investors or business partners or banks or friends and family or begin crowdfunding or anything like that. So we're going to go through the list now. 
So you need to think about legal and corporation and license fees, business banking, legal fees and permits and architect fees because most places require you to invest in an architect in order to do any major interior modifications in your space. You need to hire an accountant. You need to pay rent likely first, last month and security deposit. So that alone can be tens of thousands of dollars. You need to think about interior modifications like floors, paint, counters and cabinets, your plate area equipment. And again, I have that breakdown video linked below where I talk about how much each one of our playhouses cost, each one of our pieces of equipment, all that good stuff. Coffee equipment and machinery, which I also have a video about. Insurance, because a lot of times people will make you pay a 12 month premium upfront. Your loyalty key tags and supporting software and your point of sale system and that software, because a lot of times there's a large startup fee associated with that business cards and any brochures or paper flyers or paper advertisements, furniture, so cafe tables, seating, office furniture, seating inside of the play area, all that stuff, and changing tables for the bathrooms. You need to think about silverware and plates. Are you going to serve things on actual real ceramic plates or are you going to use disposable items both for your normal cafe service and for your parties? And if you do decide to use ceramic ware, stuff that is reusable, it's likely going to increase your kitchen equipment costs by a lot because in New York State, at least, you need to have either a commercial dishwasher or a huge three-bay sink if you're going to have any sort of reusable dishes or cups or silverware or anything like that. You're going to need to invest in a starter amount of paper goods, so napkins, clips, lids, or cups, excuse me, holsters, um, so the little hot holders, stir sticks, all of this stuff, if you're purchasing it in bulk in order to get the best savings, it really adds up. You're going to need to think about maintenance costs like window washing, because likely after you complete your build out, you're going to need to do that before you get to opening day. Any opening retail inventory or any inventory that you need for coffee or espresso, anything like that. Signage. A lot of people forget to think about their exterior signage. For us, it was around $13,000 just for our sign. Now, we were able to negotiate a bit of a split cost with our landlord, but a lot of people forget to factor that in. Wi-Fi and a security system with video surveillance. This stuff can get quite expensive, but a lot of insurances require it. So while you may think you may be able to save on a lot of these costs, a lot of landlords, a lot of leases, a lot of insurance carriers will require you to invest in these things. As I mentioned, kitchen equipment, so commercial fridges, commercial dish dishwashers, you cannot use home-based equipment in most commercial settings if you're going to even be preparing any sort of basic food. We did not have any oven, we did not cook anything, we did not microwave everything, anything, and we needed to have an entire kitchen build out with all commercial items. And we were able to find a lot of it used and we bought a lot of it from a kitchen equipment reseller, but even then it was tens of thousands of dollars. So think about that. Employee acquisition. So putting ads out on Indeed or Monster or Facebook or anything like that, and also training those employees. And then, as I mentioned, you need to have working capital. Something that Christine from Sweet Peas Play Cafe in Kokomo, Indiana mentioned on my podcast recently when I interviewed her about what she would go back and tell herself if she could start the journey over. The number one thing she said was that she would have had more operating costs to give herself a bigger cushion so that she didn't always feel like her back was against the wall in those first couple months because it's very difficult to be creative and provide excellent customer service if your bank account is constantly getting drained all the way down to zero. It is extremely stressful. And the key here is to make sure you're getting estimates from real contractors in your area who are familiar with the business model that you are hoping to achieve. And that might require a little bit of education. You can feel free to send them my YouTube channel if you'd like. I have tons of tours and tons of description videos, but make sure you work with people who are familiar with what you want 
or be prepared to educate them because you want to make sure your estimates are as accurate as possible because you don't want to make the mistake that I did and take too little out in startup funding. And as I wanted to mention earlier in this video, for lawyers and a lot of contractors, they require retainers up front or a large payment up front. So when you call and ask what a 2,500 square, square foot space might cost to paint, might cost to provide cabinetry for, if you call a coffee retailer and ask how much a commercial grade espresso machine is going to be, because you will need a commercial grade espresso maker. Even those $2,000 at home espresso makers are not going to be able to keep up with any sort of commercial volume. And a lot of times the health department won't even allow you to use a at home or non-commercial grade espresso machine or coffee maker, even if you didn't have that much of a demand or need to produce 50 lattes a day. A lot of times it's just not legal to do. So when you're calling these companies asking for estimates, make sure you also ask them what they require upfront versus at delivery because that can make a really big difference when you go to get your funding. All right, so now in this last part of the video, I wanna talk about a lot of mistakes that I see a lot of indoor playground owners make when they're estimating their startup costs. And I mentioned a lot of these, but it's worth repeating. So number one, not getting real quotes from real contractors. Using somebody else's quotes or estimates, even using mine is likely not going to be accurate for your specific area and your specific space. And even if you don't have a space in mind yet, you can do a little bit of research in terms of what spaces are available in your area. You likely know at least an idea of what type of play you wanna accommodate and what age range. So you should have an idea of the space you'll need and the space that's available in your area. So try to use an average of the square footage and maybe the area that it's in. Just use an example space until you are in lease negoci negotiations and you need to go back and update all of these with real life estimates. So this is going to be a living document that you're gonna create and you might need to update it several times along the way, depending on what space you end up choosing versus what you had thought of at the beginning and so on and so forth. But I really want you, even before you look at spaces, to call up some, con some contractors in your area, ask if they're familiar with their business model, what it might cost for a complete build to suit and all that good stuff. And then number two, again, I talked about this already, but really going lean on the startup costs. This is a brick and mortar business that is going to be completely dependent on how you design your space. And that's one of the reasons that I created my signature Play Cafe Academy course is because this business is so difficult and so nuanced and it really re requires a lot of thought and a lot of intentional design and you want to make sure that you're also being as accessible as possible for people of all abilities. That is more important than ever in 2022 and beyond. So you really don't want to skimp on either your equipment or your build out. So that's another mistake. And then the third mistake that I wanted to talk about is not negotiating for your lease to include at least some of your build out. So our build out included what I'll call a vanilla box build out meaning that our landlord paid for the plumbing and all of the HVAC and everything um, all the way up to the drywall of our space. And it literally looked like a vanilla box because everything was drywalled, but we had to pay for the finishings. We had to pay for the flooring. We had to pay for the paint, the light fixtures, the cabinetry, the counters, the kitchen equipment, um, the security system, all that good stuff was on us. But we were able to save a lot of money by negotiating that vanilla box build out into our lease. We were probably able to save upwards of $50,000. And the reasoning behind that is because a lot of times businesses will be able to use that plumbing and HVAC and those interior basics for tenants that come after you or that may potentially come after you if you decide to expand or move or close or sell your business, whatever the outcome may be. We were also able to negotiate all of our bathrooms all the way up to, like I said, the finishings into our lease. So our, our landlord paid for our toilets, our sinks, 
all of those major expensive fixtures and all of the plumbing systems. We had to pay for the changing table that we wanted because we wanted one that was specific to kids of all the way up to age 12 because again, we were very conscious about accommodating kids with special needs and really kids of all abilities. So we had to pay for all of that stuff, but the basics we negotiated into our lease and that saved us a huge amount of money. So that's a big mistake that I see a lot of indoor playground owners make is not knowing what they can and cannot negotiate or should and should not negotiate into our lease or into their lease. And that's, again, something that I cover in great detail in my Play Cafe Academy course, which is also linked below. The next mistake that I wanted to talk about is not accounting for the hours you need to train your staff prior to opening. So I didn't think that I was going to need to pay employees until we actually opened our doors and had revenue coming in. But boy, was I wrong because we were operating a full service cafe and people needed to get comfortable with our space. They needed to learn our layout. We had to get our systems down. And this required probably over 100 hours of employee payroll prior to ever bringing in a single sale. So we did pre-sale memberships and play passes and retail items and all that good stuff. But before any in-person sales were made, we had to train over 12 staff members and that took a lot of time. So if each of 10 staff members needs to train at least 10 hours, which is pretty standard, that's 100 payroll hours. So you really need to think about that when you're estimating your startup costs. That's another thing that we had to really account for more, um, more working capital in order to fund. And then the next thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of mistakes indoor playground owners make is not accounting for everything you need in order to open. So sure, people already guess that they have to buy furniture and things like that, but a lot of people don't realize how expensive an initial retail inventory is or how much their point of sale system is going to cost in terms of the actual kiosk or computer or things like that, because a lot of times those can get very pricey. So I really want you to think about every single thing, every single touch point that you're going to have, your staff's going to have, your customers are going to have, because again, you don't want to skimp when you are welcoming customers into your space, because if you feel unfinished or underprepared or frazzled, that's not a place that they're going to want to trust with their kids' safety. So you really have to start with your best foot forward. So you need to think about these investments before you ever welcome customers, even if you do a soft opening. So we miscalculated a bunch of these. These were a lot of the mistakes that I made. And like I said, it put us in a really dire financial situation right when we opened, so much so that we had to go back and get more working capital just to get through those first couple months where we were, were still working towards becoming really profitable and making all of our loan payments on time and insurance payments and payroll payments and paying ourselves so that it was actually worth it to us as a family to continue with this business. So it really comes down to research and doing your due diligence as a prospective owner. And this is not a process that you want to skimp on. So again, I have a ton of free and premium resources available for you if you need more support or if you'd like more information on this topic. And if you want to dive into any particular thing that I talked about in greater depth. So again, I have the free two-hour funding class that is linked below. I have my full Signature Play Cafe Academy course. I have a $27 business plan toolkit. I have 100 podcast episodes. I have tons of indoor playground tours on this channel. So everything you could ever possibly need to open a profitable, keyword profitable, indoor playground or play cafe is linked below this video. And feel free to send me a message on Instagram or leave a comment below this video if there's a topic that you'd like to learn more about or that you'd like me to dive into, or if you just wanna leave a comment, say hi, or ask me any other question or anything about my experience in my five years as an indoor playground owner. All right, have a wonderful day, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, don't forget to subscribe to this channel before you leave and check out my playlist for a ton of other prospective indoor playground and current indoor playground owner content. Bye.